now let's say subtraction of number base now how can we do minus that in to subtract a number yeah now let's do the same thing we did in addition let us assume i gave a question like subtract two one three four subtract a number like one six five seven subtract it from that one let's say this is base 10 again two one three four minus one six five seven base eight let's assume this now to subtract what are you going to do you you can do this normal as in that's a normal subtraction so we extend it to a different base here now the first thing you do you should say 4 minus 7 that is the first thing but is it possible no so it's not possible to say 4 minus 7 so what are you going to do as usual you say you borrow 1 from 3 to this 4 so now 1 plus 4 5 uh -huh. is that possible so this is to tell you that you are not actually borrowing one the one you borrow from here is actually 10 so 10 in the sense that it will represent the base so any number you borrow that i say borrow one from here this will reduce to two as it reduced to two the one is automatically 10 which is the base so if i borrow one from here for example this three will also turn to two because i've borrowed one but as i'm adding it here the one will be eight eight in the sense that the base is eight that means the one you borrow always represents the base now another thing you need to know is that the number here the number here this number is not actually three look at it you know this is 2134 so now 2134 that means the meaning of this number is 2134 do you see the number is not actually 3 it is 30 so that means as you say you borrow 1 we know that it's easier for us to just say 1 here yeah, but it's actually you are borrowing 10 which is the base if you borrow 10 from this 30 it will remain 20 but we just say here yeah, it remains 2 because we have joined everything together as 1000 100 tens and units like that so that means the one you borrow is not actually one it always represents the base now if the base is 10 the one you borrow will be equal to 10 if the base is 5 the one you borrow will be actually 5 if the one if the base is 8 the one you borrow will represent 8 if the base is 2 the one you borrow will be 2 that means anytime you borrow one here, it is always representing the base. Now let's start. So I will borrow one here from 3. 3 will become 2. That one will be 10. Why 10? Because the base is 10. So that one I borrow will be 10. Now 10 plus 4. Do you now see it's 14? But the idea they told you then is for primary 1. Just say borrow one here, yeah, put it there, uh, making 14. No, it's not so. You borrow one here, yeah, as usual, it remains two. But note in your mind that that one is actually 10. 10 in the sense that it represents the base. Now, 10 plus 4, that will give us 14. I hey, can I say 14 minus 7? That will be 7. So, uh, this 14 minus 7, that is 7. Now, let's do the same thing here. Yeah. Can you say 4 minus 7? No. Then you need to borrow 1 from this 3. Borrow 1 from 3, that will be 2. 
but in your mind you have known that one is not one but what it's why it's because the base is it so that one you borrow is actually the base so the base is it then we'll have two plus three okay let me continue here first so borrow one from here this will be two then the one will be eight because the base is eight now eight plus four twelve now twelve minus seven that will be five so that means the answer here is five hope you get the scope now again you know this is not three again because we are borrowing one is now two so you say two minus five now is it possible no you can't say two minus five you still need to borrow one from here this will be zero but the one every time you borrow is always the base don't forget so the one you borrow is 10 now 10 plus 2 12 12 minus 5 then we are going to get 7 again do the same thing here yeah. this 3 is not there again because it's now 2 so borrow 1 from here here is 0 but since the base is 8 that one I borrow will be 8 since the base is 8 now 8 plus 2 10 then 10 minus 5 this will be 5 hope you are getting that now since this remains 0 0 minus 6 this is not there again 0 minus 6 is it possible no you still need to borrow one from this two this two will reduce to one but that one you borrow is 10 so 10 plus 0 10 then 10 minus 6 4 again borrow one from here this is one but that one will be 8 because this one is not there. Remember, when you borrow, it reduces to 0. So now, 8 plus 0, 8 minus 6, then here will be 2. Now, this is not there because it has reduced. 1 minus 1 now, this will be 0. 1 minus 1, this will be 0. So that is how we do subtraction in different base now let us now go further with additional example now let's say i have a two for one two minus seven one two base nine now let's say i have this first thing is say 2 minus 2 is it possible yes it's possible so i don't need to borrow here 2 minus 2 is 0 1 minus 1 is also 0 because it's the same i don't need to borrow but 4 minus 7 is impossible so i will need to borrow 1 from 2 so the 2 will reduce to 1 after you borrow 1 the 2 will reduce to 1 then that one you borrow will be what? 9. Why 9? Because the base is 9. Every time you borrow one, it will always represent the base. Now, 9 plus 4, that is 13. 13 minus 7. So that will be 6. So that means the answer here. Yeah, this one, I no number again, but I have 1. So that means 1 minus 0. Because nothing is there, so it will be 1 then base 9 so i'm true with this now in subtraction what do you now notice anytime you borrow a number the number will always represent the base that's it okay let's move on now if i have if i have one zero zero one one minus one 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 so not subtract base two so what's the first thing one minus one is possible so one minus one is zero so it's possible one minus one again is zero also possible but zero minus one is not possible you need to borrow but can you actually borrow from zero no i don't need to borrow from zero i need to move on again so borrow from this one this one will turn to zero but that one you borrow it will be two borrow to the next number then you borrow from this next number again 
borrow from one from two that will be one then to the next number two so this will now be two minus one that will be one then this is now one minus one that will be zero so this already remains zero because we've borrowed so that means any time a number that follow a particular number is zero you cannot borrow from zero move it to the next one just like what i did here so this will be the answer here base two now let's see another question if i have three one three base four minus one five four um one three three base four now it's possible to say three minus three that will be zero but i cannot say one minus three so i'll need to borrow one from three yeah this three will be two but that one will be 4. Why 4? Because the base is 4. So 4 plus 1 now, 5. 5 minus 3, 2. Then this 3 is not there because you have borrowed 1. That means it's now 2. 2 minus 1 now, this is 1. So this is the answer. So every time you borrow here, you are borrowing the base. Don't forget. So, try this try this number two one 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 zero one one minus one 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 now don't forget if you want to lay out and uh, want to write all this always start from back like i'm starting from here now that will be one one zero one 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 see i'm writing backward so likewise this one 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 so in case many people cannot lay it under each other then you subtract so try it now so Try this.